always Photoshop some people in. <laughs> okay, oh, you're good. <laughs> Movie star, somebody. Tom back in the seat. Yep. Yep. There she is. Six thirty. Yeah. Six thirty right now. Just so you know. right. on time. I know it's there. If you're on time, you're the last lady. one here. Yeah. since you had something about concussion training, uh, that, would, that would suffice to give confusion as a piece. And there's some modifications that need to be made or amendments to be made. We need to amend then our last regular board meeting okay. to add our policy number. Do you want me to list them or just get them to Julie so that we can amend those? Because right now I think it just says various policies and I wondered if we went back and we're looking for which ones we read that first time. We, we need to have numbers. Well, and we have them listed here for this board meeting, so we could pull from there under a second reading yeah, time. I, and, uh, I got them after. Okay. okay. Thank you. So I make I move to accept all those minutes that Lisa just read off with the amendment. Of, um, adding specific policy numbers to the September board meeting, regular board meeting minutes. <coughs> and our motion by Jenny and a second by Steve. All in favor, raise your right hand. And it passes 4-0. Okay, and that moves us on to the financial report. Valerie? Sure. Uh, so first off, we have approval of claims uh, docket number 10,159 to 10,330, totaling 1,458,845.73. Um, and then we have payrolls. Um, our nine, I'm sorry, September 30th payroll was $403,299.46. Um, October 14th was $419,542.89. From there, we've got funds reports. Uh, general funds started with $632,002.20. Uh, receipts of $995,279. Month to date expenditures were $1,425,000. I'm sorry, $1,425,942.20. We had three payrolls for September. Um, and then our ending cash balance is $201,000. $339, um, and again, three payrolls for September, so that did knock us down a little bit uh, with the momentum to be anticipated getting back up. Debt service fund, um, we started with $1,843,541.83. Uh, had receipts of uh, $8,663.44. 
no expenses for the month, so that leaves us with an ending balance of $1,852,205.27. I've got um, August receipts updated. I omitted um, some IRS monies that we had received back from QZAP bonds, so I updated August, and then so that's reflected in the ending cash balance as well. Um, my apologies on that one. Um, CPF. Um, we started with $1,116,225.01, had $8,500 in $8,540.50 worth of receipts. Our expenses for the month were $156,169.94, leaving us an ending balance of $968,595.57. Um, again, um, CPF is another one that we pay technology <coughs> from. We have three pays, three pays for September, um, so that, you know, Again, played a part in this as well with some um, software licensing and building written repair payments that uh, went on in CPF. Transportation funds started with $1,056,036.38, had $2,083.56 of receipts. Um, our expenditures for the month were $91,617.18 with an ending balance of $966,502.70. And again, we have obviously transportation salaries uh, for bus drivers and transportation directors, repays for September, um, fuel and repair and maintenance that goes on in transportation. Last but not least, bus replacement, we started with $347,508.24, had $536.73 worth of receipts. Um, no expenditures. The buses are coming in November, I've confirmed, so they're coming. Um, so ending balance of $348,044.97 for bus replacement. Any questions on the review of the funds? Awesome. I can go on to the 17 budget deduction if you want to make, if you want to do that or do it separately. We should probably do, separate. do that separately, shouldn't we, Chad? Okay. Um, do I have a motion to approve the payrolls and the funds report and the claims? Thank you. So moved. And a motion by Sandy. Do I have a second? I second that. Second by Steve. All in favor, raise the right hand. Passes four to zero. Okay. Now I'm ready for budget. Um, this is a pretty much just a formality. We've uh, had a couple. Uh, work sessions over our proposed 2017 budget. Last meeting in September, <coughs> we had our public hearing. Um, and then so now we're up to, for the next step is budget adoption. Um, from there, um, once the board approves the budget, then we'll have the CPF plan will be run in the Sentinel newspaper, and then everything will be made public on the Gateway site. Right now, there is one form available on Gateway, and that's the form three per statutory note. Okay, does anybody have any questions? We've touched on this several times. Steve, all good? Can I have a motion to approve the 2017 budget? I move that we approve the 2017 budget. It's presented. I'll second it. Okay, motion made by Jenny and seconded by Sandy. All in favor, raise the right hand. Motion passes four to zero. Next up is the 2017 Capital Projects Fund Plan and Resolution Adoption. Um, this is our three-year plan, 2017-18-19, of um, what our projected expenses are going to be for um, each building of the district's um, corporation allocations. So um, it has been advertised twice in the Sentinel as well um, for statutory requirements, and now um, the next piece is the adoption part since we've had the public hearing on Okay, any questions from the board? Um, I need a motion to approve the 2017 Capital Projects Fund Plan and Resolution. I move that we approve the 2017 Capital Projects Fund Plan and Resolution. Thank you. And a second? I'll second it. And a second by Sandy. All in favor, raise the right hand. It passes four to zero. Okay. Last but not least, we've got the 2017 bus replacement plan and a resolution adoption. Um, this runs similar to a capital projects fund plan, but 
uh, runs quite a few more years out. Um, it's been discussed at the work session and then again at the public um, public hearing and then now we're up to the adoption piece um, to move forward with 2017. <coughs> This is just straightforward at the same plan that we've always gone with. Okay. Exactly. Um, can I get a motion to pass the 2017 bus replacement plan and resolution? So moved. Moved by Sandy and seconded by Second that. by Steve. Great. All in favor, raise their right hand. And we pass for a zero. We can tell who is, who's our dead weight in here. We're, we're moving really quick. <laughs> I'm sure it's not because we've talked about these things for months beforehand. I think it's those other members holding us back. That's what I think. Okay. We can have this wiped up in half an hour. Yeah, we're good. Up. Okay, Valerie, is that? We are good. Now. Yeah, everything you've got for us, thank you very much. You. We appreciate the fact that you take care of those things for us. Um, that moves us on to student and stakeholder focus and donations. Looks like we the first one is from the Midwest Eye Clinic. They donated cinch sacks for first graders after eye exams. Uh, the second being the Red Red Barn Concessions cheerleaders working the elephant ear booth at Chili Cookoff, five hundred dollars. Terrific. Uh, House of Decor donated sections of carpet for temporary classrooms. Super. And the Optimist Club. The, for the <coughs> National Honor Society pumpkin picking, $375. Great support from our community, as always. So I appreciate what they do. Can I get um, a motion to accept the donations? Whose turn is it? I so <laughs> <laughs> Motion made by Steve. I'll second it. And seconded by Jenny. All in favor, raise their right hand. Great. Passes four to zero. Lisa, yes. I, might, I might report that Please at do. the Optimus Club this morning, we yes. reported on the total dollars that were spent. I think it was over seven, six thousand dollars, and probably two thirds of that will go to Rochester High School clubs and organizations uh, for pumpkin picking, pumpkin selling, and all all around good work. Uh, I'm sure the kids think it's labor, and we think it's uh, contributing to the youth. I think, I think it's fabulous. And it makes uh, having Dan and Carthy come to one of our administrative meetings smelling like pumpkin well worth it. <laughs> it oh, and I appreciate, I appreciate so much of what they do, what the Optimist Club does, but I also appreciate the opportunity for these organizations to have those kinds of fundraisers. Mm -hmm. As someone who has been selling frozen stuff, I would much rather send my children out to work for it. So yeah. thank you for providing yeah. that opportunity. It's great. And did I Pump. hear that they sold sold out of pumpkins is that yes. correct i think oh, i heard that at the wellness center this morning that we, we are all the, sold yeah. out all yeah. done and we, that's we bought the last one. Oh, we man. bought the last big pumpkin that's amazing that's my amazing. favorite group picking was the football team <clears throat> with the wrestlers at first they were just full of energy and they were taking those pumpkins and somebody said hey if it's a rotten pumpkin you don't need you can just throw it in the field then they start oh. oh boy, and they'd go 50 <laughs> yards out the field. So uh, there was a lot of energy there, but we picked That's a lot right. of pumpkins that day. And that is terrific. I thought you were going to say that then they turned it into a competition between the wrestling team and the football team. <laughs> Good deal. Good deal. Thanks again to everyone that helps with that. Okay, Jenny, we're on to policy. Okay, we have a first reading of several policies tonight. The first one we'll look at, these were all discussed at our study session last Monday evening. And so we have had a chance to talk through them, including the people who wouldn't, couldn't be here tonight. The first one is um, 2410. And 2410 is about audio, video, and digital recordings of meetings. And we are um, staying with option one, which is similar to what we have had in the past. So I present 2410 for first reading. We also present 2430 for first reading. This was um, twofold for us. One, we needed to remove language about state mandated testing, although I'm not sure ours included that previously anyway. Um, that was 
for participation in extracurricular activities, how they do on state tests is not, is not um, help determine eligibility. But also in there, it um, makes sure that we have a designated person who is in charge of determining eligibility and we had a choice of whom that should be and um, so we have chosen the athletic director position so that we present for f first reading that is 2430. We also have 3120.08 that um, is about employing personnel for extracurricular activities. Um, it was, this goes along with the training that we have talked about before, con concussion training, etc. This <coughs> makes sure that it is all of our um, football coaches that need to undergo this even if they're part-time, which we had already had that. We just clarified due to the state law. Um, and then policy 6320, that is a purchasing policy. Uh, Neola, our policy uh, company that we work with, had suggested uh, adding a part in there that um, worked with or talked about how we should interact with um, purchasing services like architectural services or lawyer services those kinds of things and so we have chosen to add those as well that's 6320 so I present for first reading 2410 2430 3120.08 and 6320 Jenny, we have 2461 listed on the agenda. That is um, a policy that is redundant, so we are ignoring the policy. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That's why that number was there. Okay. Can I get a motion to approve the first reading of policies 2410, 2430, 3120.08, and 6320? So moved. <laughs> I second that. Motion by Sandy, seconded by Steve. All in favor, raise the right hand, please. And it passes 40 zero. Okay. Second reading? On, yep, on to our second reading. Okay. Yes. So last month we had a first reading of another set of policies, and so that makes it the time to do these for our second reading. These are policies that um, mainly included either type of correcting verbiage, correcting type, typos even in some of them, or they change to go with a state law that we don't really have any discussion about it. We have to adopt it just as it is. So I, I talked a little bit about them more at the last meeting. If you'd like to hear more about them, we've talked about them, let me know. <coughs> but I'll go ahead and read the numbers. We have 0130 with bylaws and policies, 1130 conflict of interest, 1214 is on conflict of interest, 3113 is parallel to that, but for, for professional staff, where 1130 is administrative staff. 3214, um, again, another conflict of interest one. 3410, that is a deletion. 4113, again, a conflict of interest policy. 4140, termination and resignation. 4214, about gifts and accepting them or not. 5610, suspension of expulsion in students, 5610.02 in school discipline, and 8500, which is a food services policy. Right. Can I get a motion to approve the second readings of those policies? Steve's turn. <laughs> I move that we approve the second reading of these policies. Okay. I'll second. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Motion made by Steve, seconded by Sandy. All in favor, raise the right hand. Passes four to zero. I have a question. Yes. Have these been posted on the website yet? We have a meeting scheduled for Friday morning to get everything posted and updated. Okay. Have they been posted the new already? Website. Yeah. Do it in November. You don't get to say it again. You can't wait. It is Friday morning. Yeah. Moves us on to the personnel report. Um, Jana, can you talk to us about that, please? Oh, this right there. Steve has it. Okay. okay, here we go. Thank you. Um, we have the hiring of Heaven Espinoza as a high school intense needs instructional assistant life skills classroom. Paul Zartman 
Riddle Special Needs Instructional Assistant Half Day and General Instruction Assistant Half Day. Sandra Olvera, Riddle Intense Special Needs Instructional Assistant. The reassignment of Heather Schaefer from Columbia Cafe to Instructional Assistant in Charge of Temporary Classroom Safety. We have uh, Brittany Grant on maternity leave from February 27th, 2017 to April 24th, 2017. We have two resignations, Sabrina Prater, Columbia Instructional Assistant in Charge of Temporary Classroom Safety, and the second being Shannon Korn, Columbia Instructional Assistant Special Needs. Uh, we have two on family medical leave. Clint Gard at the high school, September 28th, 2016 to January 2nd, 2017, approximately. Kelly Gard from Columbia, September 28th, 2016 to October 20th, 2016. Uh, for continuous care, October 21st, 2016 to January 2nd, 2017, inter intermittent transportation to and from appointments. And fall intercession, we hired Misty Cripe because the turnout was so great. So that's a good problem to have. Mm -hmm. We're happy to have that um, at the middle school. And also for fall enrichment, we had Brian Goss and Charlie Schwenk for the fifth grade trip to the Indiana State Dunes Park. We had Amy Banks, Chrissy Merrill, Kylie Day, <coughs> Emily Brown. <coughs> Uh, helping with from Columbia to the Thistleberry Farm trip, which I heard really great things about. I heard they loved it. Um, and sports volunteer, we have Justin Bach at the high school basketball coach, and Eric Bacchus, middle school basketball coach. And that is the end of that personal report. <coughs> Any questions? Can I get a motion to accept? So moved. And a second. I second that. Motion made by Jenny, seconded by Steve. Thank you, Steve. All in favor, raise the right hand. Passes board zero. At least I'd like yes. to say one thing about that too. And I don't know, Jason, I'm putting you in the spot if you know how long Shannon worked at Columbia, but she had been there, she's been there a while and been an excellent IA. So I was very sad to see her name on this, but I know that we are excited for her to move on to other things, but I just, it's special to get somebody who can work mm -hmm. so well with um, kids in those um, really formative years and that does it on IA pay with just a smile on her face and she did a wonderful job so I didn't want that to stop without getting a chance to Great. say thank you to Mrs. Warren. Thank you Jenny. Okay. Um, on to other business. See. We are going to schedule a public hearing for the consideration of <coughs> the purchase of an adjoining real estate at 230 West 18th Street in Rochester, which is kind of right across the street from the baseball diamond, Correct. right? Correct. And I don't know what that street is called. 18th That's 18th, well, 18th Street, just like it says. Okay. Um, so the East on 18th Street. Um, so to answer any questions that the public may have, we're going to have a meeting on November 20th at 6.30 p.m. And that will be here or here? And, here. It, and it's November 21st. November 21st. Did I just say the 18th? You said the 20th. Stop. November okay. 21st at 6.30 here uh, immediately prior to our regular board meeting. All right. Thank you. Um, and on to superintendent business. Um, just... Uh, First of all, an invitation, our girls were um, victorious at the volleyball sectional and they'll be traveling to Covington tomorrow evening to play at 7 p.m., is that correct, Adam? Yes. Um, we have the player bus leaving right at 3.15. We have put out a listing for a fan bus that will leave at 4 o'clock yes. and there is enough to go ahead and move forward with that fan right. bus So we invite everybody out to uh, support the girls as they play at Covington in regional action. Um, would also like to share with the board, and Adam has more information in regards to this, um, Dr. Terry is trying to plan the end of the year choir concert, yes. and we are having problems um, scheduling that with all of the athletic events and weekend tournaments and those types of activities. 
So he is proposing a Sunday afternoon choir concert on May 21st. Adam, I don't know if you want to allude anymore, uh, share anymore. May 21st at 3 p.m. is the time he's looking at to avoid. The other day is, we can schedule it on a weekday, but it is the possible makeup day if the conference track meet gets rained out at Indiana Wesleyan University. And that has happened in the past, so he's just trying to avoid any conflicts. So. so I don't know if we need further discussion. We couldn't find a policy where it, we just try to limit Sunday um, activities, but in this case, would like the board to consider that May 21st date for that end of the year choir concert. And that's down the road some, so if you can begin thinking about that and, and we'll tackle it in more detail uh, during our study session as well. Um, and then just very quickly, I would like to thank the administrative team, and I think that's basically what we have out here in the audience, and just want to thank them the last few weeks has been very busy, both professionally and personally, and I am surrounded by the absolute best, so thank you. All right. Anything else? I think that's all. Or anything? Anything from the audience? If you buy that uh, new property over there, you might consider letting us plant some pumpkins there for a little bit. <laughs> finally got into paradise uh, today. We had students out there, so uh, we are now occupied and uh, everything went well, went smooth. Kids enjoyed it. Uh, teachers are so very flexible right now with it being the first time uh, a group's gone out and uh, they're kind of setting the, the tone for the rest of the groups going out, but uh, they're, they're very flexible and, and willing to do that and uh, we are underway. We have, we have another construction progress meeting scheduled for this Thursday, so things are definitely underway. I think yeah. that we all wish that they would move a little bit faster and you could see more um, happening or, you know, be visually more apparent, but those, those things are happening. They're just slowly and surely um, unfolding, but another progress meeting. We've been meeting every two weeks in regards to that, and so we're anxious for an update this Thursday. I keep watching that property over there thinking maybe they're going to bring in more rock. Maybe they're, <laughs> maybe we'll get that whole thing rocked before yeah, they're I mean, done. If we, if we, we may, it, it's I not over yet. Have that developed when it's, uh, <laughs> and I want to just echo, um, Jenny, what you had said about, about Shannon. Shannon has been very flexible in our building. And, um, RIA is, I mean, across the board do a fantastic job, but, um, you know, Shannon has been very, uh, easy going and very helpful in working with our kids and working with some of our our uh, challenge challenges that we've got so um, I just I want to say thanks as well for her service and I greatly appreciate it we're going to miss her so all right can we get a motion to adjourn is that it it's all over <laughs> all right. thank you all right.